In recent years, Street Art in Nepal has become a popular platform for activism and social change. Today, one might notice cities like Kathmandu and Pokhara boast a variety of street art, including messages around caste, religion and mythology, politics, culture, identity, and gender. Despite the diversity of art, cultural messages about women and girls prevail in light of societal norms, religious expectations, and global influence. These days, in Nepal, a number of humanitarian and development organizations use the street art platform as a messaging tool to promote women's rights and raise awareness about gender equality and gender-based violence. In fact, a number of public murals addressing violence and gender equity are commissioned by international organizations and even produced by foreign artists. A troubling aspect about this is that those absent from the decision-making process in terms of messaging, planning and designing, and the practice of art is more often than not the same women and girls who experience a range of gender-based inequalities. Whether it be teaching the techniques of graphic design and street art, or having an engaging discussion and lecture series on sensitive issues, there is value in involving a community in the practice of art. In an effort to make the decision-making and brainstorming process more inclusive to local Nepalis, Dr. Charlotte Hasalmi and Dr. Barbara Grossman Thompson partnered together for a creative initiative, which resulted in a series of graphic art workshops that fostered knowledge exchange with local research hubs, art organizations, NGOs, and schoolgirls between the ages of 12 to 17. The student workshop series consisted of a number of engaging activities for young females to think critically and develop strategies for producing inclusive, effective, and culturally sensitive messages around women's empowerment and gender equality. The students devised creative slogans and learned how to create collages, how to handcraft and use stencil art, and brainstormed mural ideas with their fellow peers. The final outcome of the workshop series resulted in two public murals at government-owned secondary schools, which the female students created and produced themselves. The graphic art series was to, one, better understand how aesthetic representations challenge or engender assumptions about gender-based violence, two, facilitate knowledge exchange between research hubs, arts organizations, and NGOs about representational practices, three, raise public awareness, four, build capacity among local NGOs addressing gender-based violence, and five, to encourage women and girls to participate in the production of anti-gender-based violence materials through creative initiatives. The POCRA student workshops demonstrated a bottom-up approach in the creation of public messaging, rather than applying a top-down model which excludes local communities from the moment of conception to completion as opposed to foreign artists and organizations imparting certain messages about women and girls, these workshops provided students an opportunity to have a positive interaction with art, participate in the production of public messaging, and build solidarity amongst their peers. Funding for this large-scale project was provided by the British Academy. And a special thanks is given to Satya Media Arts Collective, who assisted in materials and instruction, empowering women of Nepal, who helped with classroom facilitation on topics related to gender discrimination and women's empowerment, and researchers from Social Science Baja, who conducted interviews and gathered data from students. And finally, 
Dr. Charlotte Tassalmi from Queen Mary University of London and Dr. Barbara Grossman Thompson from California State University Long Beach who pitched the idea of investigating representations of gender-based violence in graphic art forms in Nepal.